Hey, what is going on guys? Today what I want to take you through is this Razer keyboard um, project of mine. It's a favorite, so I thought I might as well take you through this project. Um, the model itself is very simple, so I don't want to waste too much time on that. Um, it's just basic keys and then the base mesh over here. I'll show you what this looks like. This is the actual base of the keyboard and this is what it looks like when it's not smoothed. Um, it's, I just took a, a, a cube and I extruded it and formed it in the way that I want to. You'll see that this is a very incorrect model. These sides over here don't connect and there's a big hole in the back um, which you can actually see inside but I didn't care because you, you, you wouldn't see that in the final render of the actual thing so it didn't really matter to me. So that's a very basic thing to do. The actual keys over here, oh if you want to see what it looks like when it's smoothed. Um, that's what it looks like when it's smoothed. Like that. Um, it's not too hard to figure out really. Uh, I can't explain it because it's going to take way too long to make that and that's not even the what make this project really stand out. So the actual keys here, um, the way I did that is I took a polygon. Let's just solo that. And I added a segment in the middle like that. Then you make it editable. You select all the edges like so and then you extrude it down and then like that. And this keyboard is modeled to scale. That's a very important thing when you're trying to achieve photorealism. You add it into a subdivision surface, turn that up one. And then to get that keyboard like effect, just push this down a bit. Um, push that up and then you add a loop on each side. So one there, one there. Uh, can't get this. One there, one there and there and then there. And then we have our basic keyboard shape and then you adjust the edges to um, basically make your thing less smooth or more smooth depending on how you want your actual key to look. Um, like so and that's basically how I, did, how I did my key. But I spent a very long time making this project um, so you just need to spend time to get that right. And then the cable itself is just a basic spline inside a sweep nub. So you can sort of adjust these pieces however you want. Um, and I actually have this keyboard in real life so I was able to get um, a real life reference of this thing and see what the actual keyboard looks like. This part here I just used a cube and I put it inside a ball and then I got this cutout piece of the base and then I used a razor logo a vector format which I got off the internet and then I extruded it, I turned it into a spline in Cinema 4D and then extruded it and got this um, razor logo and that's how I did the model of the keyboard. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things wrong in this project. You'll notice like this going through the floor and stuff. I made this project when I was only like three, two or three weeks into Octane for the first time. So um, there'll be a lot of things wrong with this project, like the unnecessary amount of polygons in the scene, for example. But you'll see it's just a keyboard with a basic plane. So that's the modeling done. Um, we're going to go and get into the texturing, which is the bulk of this project. Um, Let's pop this in. My keyboard is recording the screen. Um, recording my key, not my keyboard. My graphics card is recording the screen. It's rendering the viewport and the actual live viewer. So it's gonna take. It's gonna be slow, um, and you should bear with me here. Uh, it's, it's doing a lot right now. So you have to um, uh, not hate it too much. Let's see. So we have an HDRI, a very, very high quality, nice HDRI. You can see there's no seams, nothing going on. Um, it's a very nice high quality one. If I turn this intensity down, you'll see that you can actually see outside and all that. So this HDRI is excellent quality. Um, the textures that I use are all from polygon.com. Amazing, amazing textures. The actual HDRIs that I use are from other places. Um, so yeah, that's the HDRI. Let's just let all this stuff load back in. And then we have a plane over here. This plane itself, I, I just used polygon textures like I said. I can actually go and remake this for you so you can sort of see my process through going through this. Um, so let's go and remove this 
floor tag. I add in a new glossy material. I'll apply it to the floor. Then I'll go in, add an image texture, find a wood texture that I have. Let's use this one. And let's go and change this to cubic. And then what I do is I go and copy this shader, paste it in the normal, and then you can go and get your normal. Then I go and do the specular. I change this to float. When you change it to float, it will only read um, black and white values, which saves you VRAM. Uh, I only have two gigs of VRAM, so this is very important for me. Then I'm gonna go copy that, paste that into my roughness. And then we have our float. And then next is your displacement, which you can go and paste that in there. And take your displacement in. And then I'm just gonna bump this up to 3K. Since it's a very up close image, very up close view of it, I'll pop it up to um, 4K resolution. Make that one and make that 0.5 so it's leveled. And then when we face it towards the sun, if you want those nice reflections that I had, um, the way I did that is I made a uh, I made a floor dry. Let's call this floor dry. And then the scale is actually wrong. Let me see, fifty percent. That looks a bit more right, don't you think? Yeah. It's the wrong type of texture for, for a table, but um, this is just an example of how I did this. Then you want to go and duplicate your texture. And then here I'm going to remove the specular, I'm going to remove the roughness, and I'm going to remove the displacement. We actually don't need this displacement here as well, so we're just going to copy this and then clear. I'm going to add a mix shader. Apply the mix shader into the floor tag, don't add it on top. I'm applying it onto the actual floor tag, so it keeps all the properties the same, as you'll see here. And then I'll put the floor dry at the bottom, floor dry at the top, and I'll rename the other one to wet. So the one that has no specular and roughness is the wet one, and the one that does has is the uh, that does have the roughness and specular channels is the dry one. And then we put the wet on top, the dry on the bottom, and then inside here, let's just paste our displacement so we don't forget that. Um, cause, uh, mix shaders, if you have a displacement in, in your mix shader, it will ignore all the ones inside the materials that are inside the mix shader. So it, there's no point in having it here because it gets ignored once you use it in your mix shader. Um, we're going to go and in our mix material, we're going to go and add a image shader, image material, and then we're going to go into our, our surface imperfections. Uh, this is all up to your choice, but I use this dirt wipes over here. And then we sort of get our dirt wipe look. Um, if you want to go and change the way it looks, you can go and adjust the scale like that. All sorts of stuff. But um, to make this effect very apparent, the specular on this particular material is very high. So I'm going to just lower this down quite a bit and then we're gonna go and see what this one looks like see this is very overexposed and then now you'll see you should see a big difference depending on the actual texture I'm using but you'll sort of see that you're sort of getting that wettish kind of spotty kind of feel um, like someone just wiped the desk um, but obviously I spent a lot more time on getting this to look the way I wanted to to get those minor scratches that I had to add a bit more realism uh, inside the dry texture, I went and added a bump. And then I went and took a scratch material like this, a scratch texture, and then you get these scratches. Um, naturally, this is the wrong way around, so I invert it. And then I'll go and transform it and scale it down to the way I want it to look. Point. See, that's more realistic. If it's too harsh, you can adjust the power but those are the sort of scratches that you'd get on the desk. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go and replace this floor back to the way it looked. So this one, as you can see, I spent a lot more time on getting this um, perfect. Um, and that's why I ended up with this floor. Oh, we don't, there we go, that looks right. Now the actual keyboard itself, we'll dive into that now. 
<clears throat> um, the basics. Um, the way I got the realism is I used uh, fingerprint textures in my roughness channels. Um, the only exception is this actual base of the mesh. Should be that. Nope, that's not that. Let's just find this thing. The body. The body. Um, let me turn off this. It's rendering unnecessary things. Let me turn off the render passes. There we go. So the actual body. Um, just ignore this color piece. I'll explain that soon. Um, here, if I let this render out a bit, you'll see that there's some um, fingerprints. Let me just let this sit here. These white spots here, there's some fingerprints. The way I did that is I created a, a normal material. I just bumped up the roughness a bit and then I created a diffuse material, which I called overlay. It's just a basic diffuse white material. And then I put that inside a mix shader and I put the overlay on top of the black. And then I used a mix shader uh, fingerprints. So the white parts of this fingerprint texture will show the overlay and the black parts of this fingerprint texture will show the normal um, glossy material that's underneath it. Therefore you have the glossiness and then the fingerprint marks over there. And then here I use another scratch material for the scratches inside my bump map. So um, that's how I did the fingerprints for that. How I did them for the keys, however, is a different method. Um, let's just pop these in. The actual keys I used the, I put the, the fingerprint materials inside the roughness instead. So um, that way you sort of get a, uh, a greasy type of effect instead of dust. Um, when I use the overlay over the black on this base of the, of the keyboard, um, that sort of gives it a dust type of feel. But you'll see here, it looks like there's a lot of grease. It looks like there's way too much grease and this keyboard is very dirty, but I really wanted to emphasize the fingerprints and stuff so people actually notice that it's there. Um, my actual keyboard was quite greasy though, so not this greasy, <laughs> but it was quite greasy. So I really wanted to emphasize that. And then that's why you get this very greasy sort of fingerprint look, which really adds that effect um, on the keyboard. You'll notice that's incorrect. Um, I didn't notice that when I was actually making it. Um, so if I take you through, through an example, the keys, okay, let's start from the beginning on terms of the keys here you'll see there's a bunch of keys um for every single key let me go and find this project 27 real microphone textures every single key i had to go into a photoshop document and type out every single key um that is 104 keys minus the Photoshop file. So 103 different keys I had to go and type out individually and export them as individual files. Uh, that took a while. <laughs> and then inside of Octane, I had to um, create a mix shader for every single key as well. And then plug in the texture into the mix shader, which the texture itself was driven, was used as an emission, which is how I got my lights to turn on. And then inside the mix shader, um, I basically have a key material that's on top of every single mix, sh mix, shader, mix shader. So on every single texture, there is its key with its um, whatever letter it has. And then it has a, another material on the top called key. You'll see here, all of them have the same key material on the top with their own texture at the bottom. And that actual key material itself um, is just basically the fingerprint um, sort of effect. So here you'll see, I'm going to load this back in. See, it has a lot of textures to load into this viewer here. Here you'll see um, we have our key texture over there on top which is all the greasiness um, with our roughness. Our roughness has the fingerprints. And then underneath is this key texture over here, which actually says control 
and Z and X and all that stuff. So we have two textures overlapping each other as a mix shader and I had to create that for every single key and then position them correctly on every single key on this keyboard. So it took a long time, it just depends. It's, I was very dedicated and it came out with an excellent result and I'm happy about that. Um, the actual back piece of this a keyboard, um, if you wanna know how I did the animation lights for that, I basically created a, let me just bring this down. I created a gradient and octane as my diffuse and emission channel. Um, just a basic gradient with um, keys I took from like some random rainbow. No, my actual, I, I, I Googled pictures of the actual keyboard and the keyboard itself had these colors in. So I basically stole it from there. And then to get that animation wave effect, um, Inside the offset U value, I just keyframed it and then you get this wavy effect over the layer like that. So that's how I did that animation. Um, how I controlled the emission of every single texture, because you'll see here that every single row, is, this is a very organized project. Um, it had to be to, to not pull my hair out. Um, so, how I controlled the emission for every single texture, for every single key is um, I had to go and do that in Expresso. So I took every single key um, emission channel, I plugged it into Expresso, into one Expresso tag, and then every single um, set of keys I grouped them. So here's the emission channels for all the function keys. And then here's the emission channels for all the extras. You basically just go drag it in like that. Then you go shader, power. And then you do that for every single key on the keyboard. And then what's controlling that is the emission controller here. I just set up some user data um, like that. And it had to be a very, very low max percentage because um, if it goes too high, it can over, get overblown and it won't be realistic. Um, so it's 1% maximum um, for the controller. And then it's all driven by this one thing. As you can see here, every single keyboard, every single key on the keyboard is driven by this one emission controller. So if I turn this up to 1% over there, it's gonna update every single key on the keyboard, which is gonna take a while. That's why I'm not doing it. Um, and then they'll basically turn all the lights on at the same time which um, in the long run saves you a lot of time when you're animating the lights on the keys. Um, this is very basic. It's just the Razer logo with an emission channel on top and then this um, extruded part is, this extruded part over here is a specular material with um, a fingerprint in the roughness channel. Um, so yeah, that's how I did the texturing for this keyboard. A big part of this project had to do with my fingerprint textures and my HDRI. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, please just let me know. Um, I didn't want to do a full tutorial on how to make this because it takes a very long time. To, to make all these textures takes a long time and it would be very boring to try and explain all of this to you. Um, so I've, I sort of did an overview of what I did, what I went through and um yeah if you want me to do any tutorials on my other projects on my portfolio um or any other things to do with octane and stuff um, i switched to octane a few months ago just let me let me know and i will be happy to do them because i like making these things and there aren't that many octane tutorials to be honest um uh so yeah so my actual here's my actual cameras and then the depth of field and all that stuff I exported in my render. If you want to see my render settings, it's very, very low render settings for my preview over there. And there's my camera tag. Very basic stuff. And then I went and did all my render part, all my depth of field and stuff as render passes in EXR format and did that in After Effects. So. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and have a good day. Goodbye.